Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? My name is Rob and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. I'm gonna to be providing a top 27 list of the top TSX stocks or Canadian stocks that you guys can take a peek at. Now, I haven't done one of these videos for a while, so I figured it'd be a good time to do one. And if you guys do enjoy this video, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up. It took me a lot of time, to, a lot of time and effort to put this video together. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And basically what we're doing is we'll be looking at some of the top or just good quality well-known stocks that you can take a peek at. So if you're just getting started with investing, this list will definitely set you on a good path. And all these stocks are good stocks. And I'll let you guys know throughout the video which stocks I actually hold inside of my portfolio. So let's jump into the video and let's take a peek at some of these stocks right away. So the first stock I'm gonna be talking about is one of the most popular um, railway stocks, and that is CNR stock. So CNR stock currently, at the time of doing this video, is a pretty expensive stock, trading at $135 Canadian, under the ticker CNR on the TSX. And you can see that this stock has just had a pretty good history of growing pretty tremendously over the past 10 years or so, and had a really big growth during the pandemic that happened early in 2020. It also is a very good dividend growth stock. It currently has a dividend yield of 1.89%, which is a little bit on the lower side, but they have been increasing that dividend pretty aggressively. Now, CNR is the backbone of the Canadian and the US economy. So this is definitely a stock that's probably gonna stick around forever. And I do believe uh, if you're looking for a good solid company that's going to have some good growth going over the next 10 to 20 plus years cnr stock might definitely be uh, one of the railways you might want to pick up next up we have is one of the most popular stocks to 2021 and this stock has seen some pretty good growth and became really popular once the pandemic hit and everything had to go online and that's shopify First thing you're probably gonna notice about Shopify if you're brand new to the stock is that it is trading at $1,873 Canadian, which is absolutely crazy. It is up 5,260% all time. And in the beginning of 2020, we've seen this tremendous growth, growth from this company um, pre-pandemic pre and after the pandemic. So um, a lot of people are looking at Shopify thinking it is an expensive stock, and it is, uh, but it's definitely one that's gonna be worth, I think, holding going into the future. And currently at the time of doing this video, Shopify is a relatively new company uh, starting early in 2015 and currently does not have a dividend yield. If you are interested in picking up Shopify, you can look it up under the ticker symbol SHOP on the TS TSX. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit and we're gonna talk about some telecommunication stocks. And I got a couple inside this list. The first one we're gonna talk about in today's video is gonna be none other than TELUS. And this is my favorite telecommun telecommunication stock that we have here in Canada. So when it comes to the telecommunications companies in Canada, we actually have quite a few of them here. And TELUS is probably one of the main ones I hold inside my portfolio. Um, and here's TELUS Corporation. It's under the ticker T on the TSX, so you can look up T to find it. It currently trades at $27.81 Canadian, so it's a bit of a cheaper stock uh, than most of the stocks here on this list. Uh, it currently has a decent dividend yield of 4.55%, so it's got a pretty high dividend yield, and the company is known for increasing that dividend over time. And as you guys can see, over the past 10 years here, the company has experienced pretty consistent growth. So if you're looking for a consistent tele uh, telecommunications company, I think TELUS is definitely one to take a peek at, and they have a lot of good subsidiaries like Kudo Mobile, um, uh, Public Mobile, and some other companies that are up and coming. So definitely take a peek at this one. I think this is one of the um, one of the better telecommunications companies that I think is going to do well in Canada. The fourth stock in this list is going to be um, switching gears once again to some renewable-based companies because renewable energy got pretty popular in about, I guess it would be like the early of 2020. So this is Brookfield Renewable Part uh, Property Partners. Uh, Brook, Brookfield Renewable Partners LP. Sorry, there's so many Brookfield companies, I always get them confused and mixed up here. Uh, but this one can be found under the ticker BEP.UN, and it's currently trading at $48 Canadian. So it's about a mid range price stock, and they have a dividend yield of about 3%. So it is a, a pretty good dividend company as well with a lot of growth. And you can see the popularity in uh, this company, of, I guess, towards the end of 2019. And a lot of other renewable based companies also seen like this big rise in price as well. So a lot of people do believe that renewable energy is the future, and I would probably agree with that. So, you know, picking up some of these renewable based companies definitely would be a wise idea. Um, you know, a good addition to add inside your portfolio. Now, we're going to talk about some of my favorite um, Canadian dividend based stocks, uh, dividend based growth stocks, and these are the bank stocks. So, the first stock, the first bank stock we're going to talk about is going to be one of Canada's oldest bank stocks, and that's RBC or Royal Bank of Canada. Another nice thing you're gonna notice about some of these bank stocks is that they're just solid stocks that can do a little bit of everything. The first one we're looking at, like I mentioned, is Royal Bank of Canada, and it is one of the oldest banks in Canada. It currently trades under the ticker RY, 
and it's currently trading at 126 dollars canadian and i know a lot of people are saying that like a lot of these bank stocks are currently trading at a high at a high high levels but you know what these bank stocks are always growing they're always trading at new highs um, and they're just going to keep growing so i don't think that's really anything to concern yourself with you can see the recovery i mean the, the gains of rbc over the past 10 years has been really consistent and the recovery from the pandemic has been pretty solid as well um, a lot of these banks have pretty good dividend yields as well. RBC has a dividend yield of 3.41%, which is pretty solid. And they have a lot of good dividend growth as well with consistent dividend growths and very low payout ratios as well as stock appreciation. So I think everybody should have at least some of the banks, at least one um, inside your portfolio. And I think RBC is definitely one of the better ones to look at. So number six on this list is gonna be a stock. If you're from Ontario, Ontario, you're probably gonna be familiar with this one. And this is Hydro One. This is a uh, power-based company, provides le electrical services in Ontario. And Hydro One currently has the ticker H, so you can look up H on the TSX to find it. And it's currently trading about just under $31 Canadian. Now this is more of a consistent based power company. And as you guys can see, a lot of these power companies have more or less pretty good dividend yields. Um, some of them more growth than others, but you, you'll see this consistent dividend yield with some of these companies. So Hydro One, you guys can see here, has been doing quite well since the pandemic with a nice little gain over the past couple of years. And once again, does have that pretty good dividend yield. So if you're looking for a hydro, um, like a smaller hydro company, Hydro One might be something to take a peek at. There's a bunch of other others I'm going to cover in this video as well. So if you want some other bigger options, definitely uh, take a peek at those as well. Now, when I originally made this list of stocks, they're in no particular order. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. But the next stock we're going to talk about is actually one of my favorite stocks of all time, especially Canadian-based stocks, and that is TD Bank. Now, we talked about RBC earlier, so let's talk a little bit about TD. And to be 100% honest with you guys, all the Canadian banks are good, solid companies. Uh, but let's just take a little peek at TD here. And if you guys have been following my channel, you guys know that I'm a big owner of TD Bank or Toronto Dominion Bank. Um, they have the ticker TD and they're currently trading at $83 Canadian. And this stock has just been doing tremendously well. And not only do I love this stock because of their history in terms of growth, dividend increases and current dividend yield of about 3.8%. Uh, once again, all the banks have pretty good dividend yields. But one of the big things I like about TD is the fact that they're multinational and they just keep expanding all over the world and more specifically into the U.S. So they have that exposure, which will allow them to keep growing their revenue, keep growing their earnings, which will increase the stock price and the dividend. So really good long term company. It's one of my favorite uh, bank companies in Canada and definitely something I recommend you guys take a peek at. Although, you know, all the other banks are good as well. And we'll be covering some of the other banks later on in this video. Now on this list, I wanted to make sure to include some different companies and some of these companies are going to be ones that, you know, you've probably seen around, even if you're not, you know, if you're new to investing. And the first one is Dollarama. So Dollarama is a pretty big um, dollar store company. We've seen them kind of grow over the past couple of years and they've been popping up stores over the place. The stock has been a little bit up and down, but it's been pretty, pretty consistent since it rose up in the early of 2013 to 2014. We've seen a lot of increase and it's just been actually going pretty good. You, you see in the pandemic, it took a bit of a dive like most stocks, but because it's, you know, it's, it's a good consumer based industry, we're always going to need these industries and the company is growing quite well. It's been doing pretty good. Um, they're a new company with a low dividend yield with lots of dividend growth as well. So if you're looking for um, consumer based companies, there's a couple on this list that I've included just to have some variety, but Dollarama definitely might be some uh, to, like, to take a peek at. And once again, another stock that is a pretty common household name is Canadian Tire. And Canadian Tire, um, you can find it under the Canadian Tire Corporation Limited Class A, uh, CTC.A. Um, I guess there's different versions of the stock, just like with Alimentation Couche Tard. Um, stock currently trading at $191 Canadian, and it's seen some tremendous growth since the pandemic as everybody, you know, um, kind of went to, you know, doing things like playing sports or improving their houses and buying new things and stuff like that. And this just goes to show you that some of these consumer-based retail companies really are essential and people will always need them no matter what. Um, so this is a pretty big company. You know, they've been around forever. Like I said, if you grew up in Canada, you know what Canadian Tire is. And the stock has been pretty consistent. It currently has a dividend yield of about 2.45% that's constantly growing. And this is a nice, like I said, good consumer-based retail company. It is trading pretty high right now, so that's something to take, kind of keep in mind. But I do believe long-term this company will continue to grow. The next stock on this list is going to be a power and utility based company and that is none other than Enbridge and Enbridge is one of the biggest and most popular um, utility companies in Canada because they have some of the best yields and you're going to see that this stock is if you're looking for a good high yield dividend based stock Enbridge might be something that you want might want to take a peek at.
So Enbridge is one of Canada's biggest and popular natural gas distribution companies. As you guys can see here, the stock has been formed quite well in the past and it's been pretty consistent for the most part. It's been on a bit of a downward trend over the um, from uh, I'd say about 2014 to a couple years ago, but since the pandemic, it's kind of trending a little bit upwards. Um, so we should see that growth. But one of the big reasons why a lot of people like the stock is because of the high dividend yield. And this company is notorious for like aggressively increasing their dividend yield, even though you know the company might have some higher payout ratios. But because they do have some good contracts and some good revenue coming in, they can kind of afford to do that. So. Enbridge is kind of one of those weird stocks where they just keep growing. Uh, and it's, if you're looking for a high yield company that has a big history of growing their dividends, Enbridge might be something to take a peek at. It's also a big company having a, a market cap of $98 billion. Now, once again, there are a bunch of other companies we're going to cover that are kind of in the same type of industry. So uh, we'll go over some of those as well. And, and some of them are a little bit different than Enbridge. So if you don't like the... Um, the lower growth and the high yield. Uh, I'll show you guys some other options as well that are more a little more consistent, a little more conservative based energy based stocks. And one of those stocks that we're going to talk about actually, which is going to be the next stock is Algonquin Power and Utilities. So Algonquin Power and Utilities is a little bit of a newer stock than Emmeridge, uh, but you, you can see that it's been a pretty consistent growth based um, utility stock with a good yield. And this is a stock that I hold a lot of shares inside my portfolio. It's also pretty cheap uh, at about $20 Canadian here. So the ticker is AQN on the TSX. And it's like I mentioned, it's a pretty good growth based company that keeps expanding, keep growing. They do focus on renewable energy. So that's been really good for them as well. And you know, they've had a bit of a dip recently, but we've seen them recover. Um, and they have a market cap of 12 billion, which is a lot smaller than Enbridge. And they have a good consistent dividend yield that's, you know, pretty solid pretty good 4% which is pretty solid dividend yield but it's not crazy high like Ambridge's is so it just kind of depends on what you guys are looking for but Algonquin Al Al Power and Utilities I think is definitely um, an up and coming power, power and utility company that is definitely worth taking a look at. Now whenever we approach a stock that I'm really passionate about and I really like and I really want to mention to you guys that I think this is a good quality stock I like to mention in these videos and the next stock we're going to be talking about is going to be Alimentation Custard. And I do believe this is one of the biggest kind of consumer based companies that I think over the next little while is going to do really well with this, uh, really, really well in Canada. And uh, let's take a peek at the stock and I'll show you, share with you guys some things I, I really enjoy about them at ATD.B stock. If you're looking for one of the better, uh, one of the best up and coming consumer based companies, that's a big reason why I like Alimentation Crew Stars because I don't hold a lot of consumer based companies inside my portfolio. Uh, but this is one that I definitely have kind of been growing on me over the past you know year or so since I first started investing with it. So it's got the ticker ATD.B and Alimentation Crew Start, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, is the stock you want to look at. And it's $51 Canadian. And as you guys can see, all time it is up 12,000%, which is pretty crazy. So lots of growth coming in. I guess mid to, to the 2012 kind of is when we've seen it shut up. And this company owns all the Circle K's, the Max Convenience Stores. You know, we've kind of seen them pop up around everywhere. You know, I come from a middle-sized town and we almost have one on every corner. So the company is growing and they are international as well, which is nice to see. So they have a market cap of 55 billion, a low dividend yield. But keep in mind that this company is very, very aggressively growing their dividend yield. I'm increasing it by like 15 to 20% per year. So if you're looking for a good dividend growth based company, this might be one to take a peek at. I'm a big fan of this company. And if you're looking for a nice, good growth based, uh, consumer based company, I would definitely pay, take a peek at this one. Stock number 13 inside this list is gonna be a more defensive, um, consistent uh, power based company like we talked about. And this is Fortis Utilities. So Fortis um, can be found with FTS on the TSX. It's $57 Canadian, which is kind of in that middle range. And this is a good company. I do hold some shares of Fortis inside my portfolio. Um, I kind of have a toss up between Algonquin Power and Utilities and Fortis. I think Algonquin has been showing more growth, but Fortis once again is just that consistent company that's more conservative. So it kind of once again really depends on what you're looking for. Um, pretty good growth consistently since the stock started as you guys can see here and they've had some pretty solid dividend growth as well currently i guess a little bit of a lower dividend yield for a power utilities company but they do have a more conservative payout ratio and they have have they have hit that consistent you know growing that dividend yield on a regular basis so it's kind of just more or less what you're looking for but you can't really go wrong with fortis i think it's just a good solid um, mid-range company that you know is just doing well overall so if you're looking for a utility company that's a little bit more conservative a little bit more consistent um, might want to take a peek at Fortis. 
Now, as we get to manual life, this almost marks the halfway point in this video. So we're almost halfway done this video, guys. If you guys are still with me, hang in there. Uh, we're getting through this as quickly as possible. So the next stock we're going to talk about is manual life. And manual life is an insurance based financial company. I'm a big fan of this company. You know, they've had a rocky um, bit over the years. You know, they've, they've had to deal with a lot. You know, there's a financial crisis that pushed them down. And then they tried to recover and they're doing well and then the housing crisis and now uh, the pandemic once again pushed this company back down again. But you know the company had a really good year and 2020 had a really good year, really good earnings report. It, it had a lot of growth and I, I still think this company overall in the long term is going to do well and I do hold a few shares of this company as well. Um, it's currently fairly cheap in my opinion trading at $24 Canadian and it does have a pretty high dividend yield because of the stock um, being pushed down so much since the pandemic and whatnot. So that 4.7% dividend yield is pretty high but it's also because you know the, the stock has went has gone through a lot so if you're looking for an insurance based financial company Manual Life is definitely something you might want to have a few shares inside your portfolio. And of course in this video I really want to focus on a wide variety of different stocks. You notice that we have some growth stocks, we have some dividend stocks, we have some stocks that are in between and we haven't talked about REITs yet so I'm just going to be talking about one REIT inside this video. There's a lot of different REITs in Canada but the, the main REIT we're going to be focusing on is going to be Rio Can. Now REITs are pretty popular amongst investors mostly because of the fact that they give you that monthly income and they generally speaking do have high dividend yields. However, RioCan is one of the bigger companies or the bigger REITs in Canada, I should say, having a huge market cap of $7.11 billion and they have tons of properties over the place and they have some pretty good solid com uh, solid properties as well. You can find RioCan uh, as RioCan Real Estate Investment Trust or REI.UN on the TSX and it's currently trading fairly cheap at $22.40 Canadian. Now this company has had a, an interesting past couple years. The pandemic hit the real estate industry pretty hard. As you guys can see a big drop and RealCan actually ended up cutting a big chunk of their dividend yield um, earlier. I think it was, a, was it towards the end of 2020 I believe it was. Um, so just wanted to kind of show you guys and this is a lesson that companies at any point in time, especially if they do have that higher dividend yield or if the circumstances like a pandemic happens, they can cut their dividend yield. So it's always something to think about. It's always something to be careful of. But the good news with RealCan is that they've had pretty good recovery and I've been buying RealCan aggressively since the dip because I do believe these companies will recover. Now, is the REIT something you want to hold long term? It depends on what your goals are as an investor, but they do provide that good monthly dividend yield. Just keep in mind they don't have as much growth as some of the banks and whatnot, so it just depends on what you're looking for. I plan on holding my REITs until they recover and then probably selling them uh, maybe for some bank stocks or something like that, but I do believe it is uh, beneficial to have at least some degree of REITs inside your portfolio if you want that nice monthly dividend income. And RealCan is probably one of the bigger REITs to hold inside your portfolio. One area or one sector on the TSX that's not really well represented is definitely um, healthcare and, and, and health accessibility and all these different things. And one company I've been a big fan of over the past year or so and that has benefited quite well from the pandemic is Severia Corp. So Severia Corp or Severia Corporation um, can be found with the ticker SIS on the TSX. It currently trades just under $21 Canadian and it's had some pretty good growth over the past couple years and this is a monthly dividend stock as well and they have a dividend yield of about 2.25% so I wanted to kind of highlight this company because it is a company that I hold to a small degree inside of my portfolio and it's been it's done quite well for me and um, if you're looking for something to diversify or something in the healthcare um, sector, this might be something to definitely take a peek at. So Spherocorp is definitely, uh, it's more of a growth based stock, but it's definitely something to look at if you want to expand your portfolio. And kind of expanding on that, uh, the, the, the sector diversification and covering a wide variety of different stocks in this video, we'll cover Barrick Gold. So Barrick Gold is probably one of the bigger mining corporations. They own tons of operational sites in lots of different countries all around the world. So it really is a big company, big mining company. And of course, they mine gold, as you would expect. Um, Barrick Gold currently trades, uh, gold currently trades at $27 Canadian. And it has a ticker ABX, so don't get confused with that one. Um, just double check to make sure you're getting the right company. And it's got a market cap of $50 billion, so it's a big company. They've been around for a while and they do have a small little dividend yield of 1.59%. Now, obviously this company has went up and down a lot with gold prices. You know, um, gold has went up and down a lot. From the pandemic, it kind of benefited a little bit, but we'll have to see if you're interested in holding gold-based companies or, you know, investing in gold, bear gold might be something to look at. I currently don't own any gold um, for the most part inside my portfolio uh, because I'm not really into gold. But you know, if you're looking for that diversification, once again, you could definitely look in a company like Barrick Gold. 
Now, as we get further through this list, uh, we've already talked about a couple banks so far. So I'm going to talk about a couple more banks here. And I know um, a lot of the banks, you might look at them as being the same stock. They're very similar. Um, they kind of operate from the same business. They just have a few little differences. So let's take a peek at the next bank stock in this list. And that's going to be the Bank Nova Scotia. So really quickly, guys, we're going to cover some of the bigger banks here. I'm going to fire through the three of them really quickly here. So the first one is Bank of Nova Scotia. And once again, this is just if you want some different options or you want to look at some of the other ones. Uh, Bank of Nova Scotia has a ticker BNS and it currently trades at $77 Canadian. Once again, has had pretty consistent growth, good strong recovery post pandemic. Has one of the bigger dividend yields when it comes to the banks at 4.63%. That's almost a 5% yield. So that's pretty big. Um, but no, Bank of Nova Scotia is, is one of the, the banks that a lot of people are talking about. And it, it definitely does have um, some potential. So that's the first bank. The second bank is one that's actually probably had some of the most success in the past year or so. And that's a Bank of Montreal. So Bank of Montreal is a BMO. And they're well known for their financial services. They have a lot of good investment services, like a lot of the different ETFs and a lot of people um, actually made by BMO and they have a lot of good financial services so they're kind of popular in that way and this stock is a lot more expensive so $123 Canadian uh, once again all these banks are big market caps and this one has a smaller dividend yield than Bank of Nova Scotia this is more kind of a normal that mid-range dividend yield more conservative at 3.43 percent but this bank has definitely had really good post-pandemic recovery and once again just like all the other banks has consistent growth so Bank of Montreal is definitely an option and I promise you guys, this is going to be the last bank that we're going to cover in today's video. And this is CIBC and uh, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. And the ticker is CM. And this one is, I think, is the most expensive bank in Canada, trading at $143 Canadian. It's got a pretty decent dividend yield on the higher side at 4%. 4, 4 and once again, it is one of the older banks in Canada. It's been around forever and pretty, pretty good post uh, pandemic recovery, just like all the other banks we mentioned. So I hope um, you guys can kind of see all the banks we covered in this video. I know I talked about them a lot, but they really are some of the best stocks when it comes to uh, Canadian stocks. So just kind of take a peek at them and maybe pick a couple of them to maybe add it inside your portfolio. And that definitely would be a good option. And at the start of the video, we talked about um, CNR stocks. So that was one of the railways. The other big railway that we have in Canada is CP. Now, uh, I guess I pulled up the um, US version of CP here. So this is on the US Stock Exchange, but you can type in CP and that'll pop up on the TSX as well. Um, so Canadian Pacific Railway has been a long-term uh, railway a giant in Canada. And like I said, when it comes to railway companies, we have some of the best companies here. And like the two big ones are CNR or CP. So depending on what type of stock you want to hold, Either one would be good. As you guys can see, CP has definitely had some tremendous growth and just like CNR stock did earlier this year. And once again, that's because these are essential companies. They're the backbones of the economy. This one does not have a dividend yield, so it's a strict growth stock, while CNR stock is, is more of a growth stock with a aggressive dividend approach. So depending on kind of what you want to look for, um, either one of these stocks, in my opinion, are good quality stocks. It just comes down to you and what you what you think is um, one the better the better buy at the end of the day. And a company that I've never talked too much on this channel uh, too, too much about is TC Energy. It's once again, another natural energy uh, company. TC Pipelines LP Common Stock is the name and the ticker is TRP. Currently trades at $60 Canadian um, on the TSX. And it's a stock that's been up and down, you know, just like a lot of the other energy um, pipeline stocks, you know, they've had their ups and downs over the years, um, but generally trend upwards. And we can once again, see that high dividend yield from these types of stocks. So 5.72% is a pretty high dividend yield. So if you're looking for a, you know, a good energy based, a high dividend yield company, you know, we have lots of options to choose for choose from that's the, the problem with Canada, I feel like our diversification isn't super broad. Uh, we do have some diversification, but the problem I feel like is we have a lot of stocks in the same sector. So when it comes to a lot of these energy companies, you know, it's up to you guys on which ones you want to pick. Unfortunately, we have a lot to choose from, um, but you know, they're all generally pretty good companies uh, depending on what you're looking for. So TC Energy might be one to check out as well. So if you guys are still watching the video at this point, we're approaching the end of the list. We have five stocks, le five stocks left to cover. Um, so let's get to it, guys. Let's let's kind of grind through here and let's finish up here. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Bell, and uh, we'll go through the next couple of stocks here. Telecommunications company here that we have in Canada that we're going to mention in today's video is Bell. Now Bell is a pretty big company. Um, I mentioned before that I technically prefer Telus, and I think Telus is the more consistent growth-oriented company. Bell is still a good company, and it's definitely like an alternative to look at if you want. Um, Bell currently has a pretty high dividend yield sitting at 6% and it's been pretty consistent growth with a little bit of dip and some recovery since the pandemic. So if you want a different tele telecommunications company, definitely take a peek at Bell. 
And really quickly here, we're going to take a quick jump back and talk about a financial based company that once again, one I haven't really covered on this channel, and that's Power Corporation of Canada. This is a financial company. Um, they're also uh, international, so they have a bunch of places all over North America, Europe, and Asia, and they focus on insurance, uh, retirement, wealth management, and different investment management services. Um, so this is a financial company that's been pretty consistent. Once again, you'll see that they have a pretty good dividend yield sitting at that 4.5%. And actually, post-pandemic, they've done quite well. Um, just like most of the stocks on this list, um, you know, you've seen that dip throughout the pandemic, pandemic, and then the recovery happening. And uh, they're pretty good stocks. So once again, if you're looking for like a financial-based stock, might be uh, definitely worth checking out Power Corporation of Canada. It currently trades with the ticker POW, and it's currently trading at forty dollars Canadian. And going back to oil, we're going to talk about one of the biggest and more popular um, Canadian stocks that have been around for a while, and this is Pembina Pipeline Corp. Um, it's got the ticker PPL trade at $40 Canadian. And this is a really, um, you know, oil has kind of been up and down and they've had their ups and, uh, and downs over the past couple years. And oil took a big hit, specifically this company in the beginning of 2020. And it's kind of recovered since then. We've seen a bit of recovery, so that looks like good. But PPL really has a high dividend. It's a really high dividend-based company like a lot of these oil-based companies, as, as you've seen throughout this video. And it has been around since 1954. So it's been around for a long time. It's a big company. And it's had it's had its growth in the past and had its dips, but it's kind of been a pretty good, consistent dividend stock. So um, if you're looking for a pipeline company, uh, Pembina is definitely a solid that's been around for a long time the third and final telecommunications company that we're going to talk about this is the second last stock on this list we have one more after this one so rogers communications is a pretty good uh, telecommunication telecommunications company i'm also a big fan of them as well um, they have fido uh, rogers wireless and uh, they, you know they have all kinds of different services uh, mostly telecommunication based um, they have a pretty big market cap of 32 billion dollars and they trade under the ticker rci.b and it's about $64 Canadian, but this has just been a consistent growth uh, telecommunication company, just like TELUS, uh, with a little bit more growth focus, I guess, um, and a little bit smaller dividend yield. So this is a more growth focused, smaller dividend yield company. But once again, uh, I'd say Rogers and TELUS are some of my more favorite tele telecommunication companies, although they're all pretty good stocks at the end of the day. And the last stock on this list is gonna be none other than a common supermarket favorite here in Canada, and this is Metro. Um, now, I don't invest in a metro myself, but I do see some pretty good potential and this company has really kind of come up over the past couple of years, you know, and if you've been, if you lived in Canada, like a lot of the metro stores have done pretty well and their earnings and business have been consistently growing and they're, they are nice stores and we've seen that growth here, pretty consistent growth over time and once again, we've seen like it, it is an essential service, so, you know, it did well throughout the pandemic. So Rogers currently has the ticker MRU if you guys want to look at buying it and it trades at $65 Canadian. It's got a dividend yield of 1.53%, which is pretty low on the lower side, but it is one of those companies that is aggressively growing it. And they have all kinds of different subsidiaries, like all these uh, different consumer-based companies. So, you know, they really are a good service that, you know, has a lot of protection and they really are essential at the end of the day. All right, guys, so we're done the video and that's it for the entire list. Once again, none of these stocks were in any order per se, and there's tons of other stocks that I didn't mention in this video that are all that are also good quality stocks. So if there's any stocks you guys see that I missed out in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you guys are just getting started with building a portfolio out, um, you know, don't worry if this kind of feels like it's overwhelming. You know, you can always pick an ETF or something, or you can just kind of pick one stock at a time and kind of just slowly start adding them inside your portfolio. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, like I mentioned earlier, if you did enjoy the video, please sure to give it a big thumbs up. It took me a lot of time to make this list and put the video together and uh, if you guys do want to subscribe that'd be cool as well so anyways guys take care hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys later